mistakes and even a friend of mine i was talking to her the other day and she was telling me about how she um, told a patient who she saw somewhere in the waiting area the lady was with a little boy and she went up to the little boy and she was like oh my god you're so healthy looking and chubby and that particular pr lady took it up against her like sent an email and was like one of your staff talked to my child in a very demeaning way but it is just cultural backgrounds it is the way that some people get to talk back in my own country you can actually just see someone straight up and go you're looking very fat how come you're looking very fat how come you're looking very skinny hello 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 so guys today's video i am not sure what exactly we're going to be titling it but this is a video anyways this is a story time that i think i should share with you guys so you know that phrase of small girl beat god i have to say that phrase has worked for me so far especially in my career journey so just in case you do not know i worked in nigeria in the healthcare profession for about four years before i moved to ireland and of course over the years i had developed some habits and behaviors some of which were good and some of which were bad but traveling abroad to practice of course my eyes are now open now and i get to see things from a different light which is what traveling gets to do to you and then working abroad also gets to do for you our Nigeria system can have a lot of cracks and crevices if that is a term at all to use here so there's lots of i believe most of the people there in the healthcare system are willing to work but the problem is facilities are just not available also of course when you work in that kind of system at some point you become very lackadaisical you get to develop this traits where you're not re where you're reluctant to help people like go all the way out to help people without having a reward i realized that one of the traits that i had when i came here was it was quite surprising to just see people work like help patients do their jobs without expecting to receive anything in return except for their salaries and thank you i remember one time i was working with a particular consultant here and i mean like every time a patient left his room and I just noticed that there was just this sense of like relief that they felt and, and I remember one day I turned to him I was like do you know what if you were in my country doing this job that you were doing every day you come in to work like there might be a cow or a cat waiting for you outside because I remember how it was back in Abuja where I worked like the consultants there are just waiting to do an MRI and if there's like a minister of course the minister has to drop something for the for like the staff unfortunately and he eats into the system and eventually whether we like it or not you just realize that all those things will accrue and become a problem eventually anyways let me not be complaining about nigerian problem because that is not why i came here today so this story time will actually be about how i first of all the first job i worked here in ireland was like two years in case i've not mentioned it and at the end of two years of course with me thinking that i had given my very best i tried to drop a lot of bad traits including my african lateness african time lateness syndrome um in fact when it happened and i lost the job i actually thought that it was because of like sometimes i was probably like two minutes late to work or like five minutes late to work at the end of the day i actually was not even given a proper like reason why i lost that job i actually tried calling the manager to ask like what exactly was the problem did i have any lapses where exactly did i have weak what were my weaknesses at the end of the day she was like it was nothing exactly we don't know what reasons to give we just felt like we didn't want to renew your contract anyways all good and well thank god for the profession that i have found myself in except my license is seized there is no way i will not find a job wherever i find myself thanks be to god so that job came and went and of course i had learned my lesson learned new things and new ways to get to find my way in the system i took a break for like five months and the next time i got another job was sometime in march and i started this new job which i am currently on right now so recently i was called out guys i was sent a letter so the first strike was for using my phone in the working area the next strike was for sleeping in the work area which if i had tried in nigeria nobody would even have the guts to talk to me because i mean like what the heck i am at the level where you should not even open your mouth talk to me and then thirdly the third strike was because i had wrongly identified a patient so let me just break down the story to you guys we're already in 10 minutes so i started working this job and i was enjoying it 
but I'm the kind of person who likes to just stay in the background and watch things. I won't talk too much, especially in the work environment. I'll just watch from an angle. Because I always felt people were always doing like too savvy. People were always doing like I service. So sometimes it will be annoying to me though. But one thing I noticed is in this part of the world, you're expected to do ITK. You're expected to do I service. You're expected to be acting as if you're interested, even if you're not. Just show enthusiasm. That is all they expect from you. So one day, one of my friends called me and she's like, Sissy, I heard some people talking about you and they said you are not showing any form of enthusiasm. And of course, nobody will come and tell you that one. They're not going to discuss it during their lunch breaks when you're not there. So <laughs> I decided to change and I was like, okay, no problem. This will not be me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. So I tried to do that for a couple of months and then things changed. But I think someone had seen me using my phone one time in the patient area. So that particular person, of course, people will rather go and report your case so that i don't know whether reporting somehow helps them climb the ladder more here Sha, or something like that but i don't know if i have two horns that if you come and tell somebody excuse me i think this thing you're doing don't do it anymore it can actually cost you your job try and change at least i mean like after working with people for a while they become like let me not say friends but you become like acquaintances so i believe there's some form of relationship that you develop with yourselves but of course, in this part of the world, nobody will tell you. So be very cautious about that. So somebody had seen me on my phone before and gone to report me. So my manager sent me an email warning me about that. I eventually just decided, okay, you see this phone matter. Let me just drop it inside my, like, let me just drop it. So I started just flinging the phone somewhere while work was going on. On a particular day, I decided to go upstairs to have a nap because I I kind of slept late that night, so by the time I got into the office, of course, I noticed that I was kind of drowsy. And I did not even call, like, to be off work because I was probably not feeling too strong. But I came to the office and I was working 10 a.m. I decided, you know what, let me just go upstairs and lie down on the couch in the kitchen so that I can just, even if it's 15 minutes, I'll be sharp afterwards. So I set my alarm, 15 minutes, I woke up and then I started heading downstairs. Unfortunately for me, I set my alarm on snooze instead of stop. So the room I was assigned to after that the tea break was a room that I had to work with a doctor. So I was working with a consultant and then my alarm goes off again. Classic. So the alarm goes off and this time around I was trying to prepare a shelf for the doctor to work on the procedure. So she's like, no Cece, don't use your phone in front of the patient. So I now turned, I'm like, sorry, of course I was panicking. I was like, no, no, I'm not trying to use my phone. I just want to put the alarm. It was the alarm, but I don't think she heard me though. So somehow, somehow that report got up to my manager and I was eventually sent a note about that case. So that was a long time ago, like some months back. So that was one strike on me. The next strike was um, sleeping in the work area. So what happened was in this particular job, we have a kitchen area that has two couches. So I remember one time I had asked um, a couple of people like, is it okay if I lie down here to just nap? Because I developed this habit. Yes, I developed, I don't know whether to call it a bad habit though, but I developed this habit from my last job where I used to just lie down during my lunch breaks and take a nap over the hour, at least for five minutes and I'll come back to work. So while some people just want to go and have their lunch to eat, me, all I'm thinking about is my 45 minutes to sleep and I'll be back to work. So I'll go back home during my last job, go home, rest. So when I came to this new job and I saw a couch in the kitchen area, I'm like, cool, this is God sent. So I think a couple of times I had slept on that couch during my lunch break, set my alarm and after lunch, I'll go back downstairs to work. But a particular lady had probably seen me and decided to like just talk here and there. And somehow I think the news got to, of course, where it shouldn't get to. And that was noted against me but I wasn't told anything so the next time when when I was eventually now like called out was um, on a particular occasion when I think clinic we had finished on a particular day we finished this was a clinic day so clinic had lasted for such a long time it even like took like 30 minutes of my lunch break so on that particular day I finished working supervised by someone older than me in the profession and then I was like, can I go into, I asked her, I was like, can I go into that room to just lie down and stretch a little bit? My feet hurt, like I've been standing all day. And she was like, fine, like as long as you 
like once your lunch is over you can come out and everything is cool i was like okay no problem so i started to go in there to just lie down two minutes into my my lie someone knocks on the door and i locked the door so i opened the door and i was like sorry please ask you, um hi and she was like uh that is anything going on in that room so i was like no there's no clinic no clinic held here today in that particular room so she was like okay that she wants to come in there to do some work so i was like okay perfect no problem i'll just stand up and um move everything here so i just pulled out the bed roll and then put another one put a fresh one and then i opened the door for her to come in so she came into the room and felt that i was sleeping and i don't know like i said people just won't think that the easiest way to handle something sometimes is just to tell someone like excuse me what you're doing might not just be right in the work environment instead of just taking the story upstairs to report i mean this person is coming from a different background for all you know this might be normal where she's coming from so my dear the news went upstairs as usual and the report against me was that i was sleeping and i locked it off basically two minutes sleep so on this particular week i had two strikes against me the last one was wrong identification of a patient so here we work with a digital system back in my country i was working with a system that is analog manual semi digital so let me call it semi analog um, and I wasn't used to the digital system so of course I was learning from my last job I had to come into the system and this was like a totally different specialization so and very sensitive specialization so of course I'm still learning the ropes on the job of course as usual human beings will make mistakes and one day I called in a patient finished with that particular patient um, by the time I had finished with that patient I think I had a small problem with her case because she was like a special case and i had never done that kind of thing before or that kind of case before so by the time i had finished that case i called an older um, radiographer into the room to help me just assess what i had done so she was trying to look at it but she didn't sign out on that particular case so at the end of the day of course it was all to my name and i called in a second patient and just positioned the patient for the procedure without looking at what I had on the computer. So I asked the patient her name, her date of birth, her GP, no more questions I asked people to identify them, but those were questions that I asked from the paper that I was looking at. I didn't look at the computer, which is something that I have learned now to look at the computer and look at the paper. So I looked just at the paper and then I finished ticking all the boxes there without looking at the computer. Guys, I went to position that patient only for me to finish positioning her come back to my computer with my fingers on the on the buttons as usual very fast to press buttons and i just went zing next thing i noticed is this lady's name or the name on the computer was the name of the patient that had just walked out of my room so at that point i just tried to keep up a very cool face professionally act like a like i knew what was happening and then i was like sorry ma'am please just sit down i need to just go check out your images somewhere on the other in the other room right around the corner so she sat down and then I ran out of the room <laughs> to go and call somebody to help me out, someone that had worked there for a while. So she comes into the room and she's like, okay, I should not worry. I should just finish doing what I was doing. That will sort it out. So, of course, immediately I finished with the second patient. I decided to just try and sort out all the computer things. But we eventually didn't get to do it. And the thing about the digital system is once a mistake is made, it's not like the analog system that you can just use pen and paper and cancel it. This one, it goes straight into the system and everybody gets to see it so some top shots got to see it and of course i was eventually now called out let me say when all of this the two strikes of lying down in the room and um the wrong identification happened that was like let me say on a thursday by the friday when i got back home for my lunch break i noticed a letter that was posted out to me so it was this very chunky letter and i was like my goodness like who the heck is sending me a letter this hot afternoon this summer break and I opened the letter only for me to see I was being called for a meeting. So at that point, it was more like somebody was just holding the knife to cut the arm, like to just cut me off the system. That's how I felt. I felt like for them to actually send me this letter, then it means that it was just for me to come and explain why exactly I should not be sacked at this point. What happened on the Friday? So that was like on the Friday, guys. Like I said, I received that letter. So that day I was not so happy, but somehow I went back to work luckily for me that day there was this particular lady that came in later in the day she came in to 
um, for a procedure and then I attended to her but when she walked into the room she was like and I, of course I'm always the black girl with some makeup and my hair hanging in the office so she walked into the room and she's like hi what's your name and I was like oh my name is Chi Chi she's like oh Chi Chi la 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 and she's like where are you from and I was like okay I'm Nigerian and then she was like oh that she just finished reading this book by this beautiful Nigerian author and of course I already knew who he was she was like oh Chima and I'm like Chima Amanda did she she's like yes the book half of a yellow sun have you read that book before so I was like yes I've read the book and she was like oh sweetie that book is awesome and then she started trying to enlighten me more on the Biafran story and I was just so thrilled to see someone who actually understood the Biafran story so much so she was just telling me about how she got to know so much about it and we got chatting talking about life and some other things and being women blah 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 and at the end of the day when she walked out of the room there was nothing special to this particular procedure but I just found it very easy to like chat with her and by the time she left that room that day, this lady went back home, sent an email complimenting my service. This had never happened in all of my years of practice here, guys. And by the time she sent that email, she forwarded to like the HR blah. I didn't even know about it. It was when I came to work on Monday morning. Of course, my panel was set for Tuesday morning and I was still trying to wrap my head around how exactly am I going to answer my questions, how to call my friends to help me out, those who had worked in the system longer to just help me explain some things, how to defend myself. Eventually though, um, on Monday morning, my manager came to meet me and she was like, oh, that she doesn't think she might be able, she'll be in the office on Tuesday, that if I don't mind, let's have the meeting on Monday. So I was like, oh, perfect, it's fine. Like, um, by the time I checked my email, my work email on Monday morning, I saw that email that was CC to everyone and I was so like happy. Like I couldn't even believe it. Like, what did I do? What was the special thing that I did to this time around? But anyways, um, thankfully that email went a long way to help soothe the minds of the people who were in charge. And somehow I had that meeting with my manager and it wasn't as bad as I thought. She actually just wanted to ask me questions like, was I on any tablets that was making me feel drowsy in the office? I was like, I wasn't sleeping that particular day. I know I sleep sometimes, but this particular day I wasn't sleeping. But of course, that was like medicine after death. The report had already been sent out and whatever somebody wants to see is what they will see. So anyways, so she was like, she knows I probably was not sleeping, but this is what has been laid against me. And that what do I think I can do to change things um, all these reports that have been laid against me and I was like okay at least we've talked about the phone before and I told you that I dropped my phone in my handbags now I don't bring up my phone during work hours and she was like okay yes that she hasn't heard any complaint about me and my phone for a very long time but these were just some of the things that I had to change and things of some of the things that I've had to learn and I just wish that when all of these things had happened at least for the ones that I could have been corrected I wish that I was at least just corrected by these people that I consider as acquaintances instead of just being reported because I mean like you really do not know what people see as normal and abnormal but anyways guys so these are just some of the things that um, have happened to me recently that um, kind of cost me my almost cost me my job so let me know what you guys think about this story time if you think that i should have been penalized more than i was if you think that this job should have been taken away from me um i believe that this story will probably be helpful especially now that people are especially healthcare professionals are doing a lot of migrations traveling around the world looking for ways to further develop themselves and of course looking for the big boxes who pays the highest Thank you guys so much for watching until i see you on my next video don't forget to subscribe and like this video and i will see you next time bye bye